Before the advent of quantum mechanics, famous scientists such as Maxwell, Boltzmann, Gibbs applied statistical methods with the help of classical physics. Here, particles, although physically identical, are treated as distinguishable, because their position and velocity are assumed to be traceable. This means their trajectory over time is deterministic, thus allowing us to effectively label each particle, like how I do it here with the different colors. Let's consider a three energy level system, with a total of n equals to eight particles. First, we can distribute different number of particles to each level, denoted by n sub j, which in the system on the left, we have n1 equals to 2, n2 equals to 3 and n3 equals to 3. The second system shows a different way of distributing the number of particles. In the system on the right, we simply swap the red and cyan particles as compared to the middle system. These two configurations are distinct because the particles are distinguishable. The distribution of these particles across these three energy levels can be determined using the combination formula. See previous video in the link on permutation versus combination. For the first energy level, the number of different combinations of choosing n1 equals to 2 particles out of a total of n equals to 8 particles is given by n factorial divided by n1 factorial, and divided by n minus n1 factorial, and we denote this combination as d1. For the second energy level, we have n2 equals to 3 particles. However, now the number of particles left to choose from is n minus n1. Hence, the number of different combinations of choosing n2 equals to 3 particles out of a total of n minus n1 particles is given by n minus n1 factorial divided by n2 factorial, and divided by n minus n1 minus n2 factorial, and we denote this combination as d2. Similar calculations can be done for the third energy level. Given the total number of particles to be n, let us denote d to be the multiplicity, or the number of ways of allocating n1 particles to energy level 1, and n2 particles to energy level 2, and so on. d would then be a product of d1, d2, d3 and so on. Copying the expressions we worked out in the previous slide, we notice that the denominators of the prior d cancels with the numerator of the subsequent d. This allows us to arrive at a compact expression for d to be n factorial divided by the product of all nj. Up to this point, we have discussed how to calculate the multiplicity d of distributing the particles across the different energy levels. However, within each energy level, it generally hosts more than one quantum state. We denote the number of quantum states for energy level j to be g sub j. Consider a single energy level with a degeneracy of 3, and with n equals to 5 particles. There are of course different ways of arranging these 5 particles across the different degenerate quantum states, where 4 of the possible arrangements are illustrated here. Since we are dealing with distinguishable particles, swapping any two particles or batches of particles between two quantum states are clearly differentiable and counted as different arrangements. Thus each of the n particles will have g ways of arranging itself, then the total multiplicity, or the total number of ways of arrangement will be g to the power of n. Putting everything together, the total multiplicity m of the system will then be the multiplicity d, which denotes the number of ways of distributing nj particles across the different ej energy levels, multiplied by the product of all the mj, which denotes the number of ways of arranging the nj particles within each ej level. To conclude, we will end this with a simple example of a three energy level system, with the number of particles and degeneracy for each level as indicated. Using the formulae we discussed earlier, we can calculate the multiplicity m for each level, and the multiplicity d. We can work out the total number of arrangements in this system to be about 3.8 millions, a very large number indeed. You should pause the video and repeat this calculation yourself. Certainly, the multiplicity for classical distinguishable particles is larger than its quantum indistinguishable counterpart, which will be discussed in separate videos on Fermi-Dirac statistics and Bose-Einstein statistics, with the links in the description. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.